Hello, my name is Sean Civic, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco. This video will show you how to configure Catalyst Center's backup and restore. It'll also go over the server requirements and the configuration as well on the, for the backup server. It's a good idea to check out the Catalyst Center Administrator Guide as it covers the backup and restore process, also the server requirements, storage requirements, and how to set up the NFS server. So please check out the Administrator Guide and I'll put a link in the, descri in the description. You can also follow this uh, demo as well as I'll take you step by step through the server configuration. So let's dig into that now. So I have a brand new server uh, installed, a brand new uh, installation of Ubuntu version 22.04 that I simply downloaded and installed using all the default settings. So this is a, a brand new server, uh, all the default settings. And the first things, uh, a, a lot of these settings are enabled by default in, U, uh, in Ubuntu. Uh, but just running through this for completeness, I'll run through some uh, prerequisites, which are to make sure that I'm using a version of Ubuntu that's uh, 16 or later. So I'll do an LSB release dash A, and I'll just verify that I am on a, a supported version. So it's Ubuntu is uh, version 2.22. Uh, so it's greater than 16. Uh, the next thing would be rsync. So I'll do an rsync version and just to validate that rsync is installed. Now that rsync is installed, I also want to make sure that the c.utf8 encoding is enabled. So I'll do a locale ctl and then list locales and then grep and then uh, c.utf and just to verify that the um, that encoding is enabled. The next would be want to make sure that uh, SFTP is enabled. So I'll do a cat etsy SSH and then SSHD config. And I'm just looking for the SFTP line and I just want to um, validate that this line is not commented out. Okay, uh, the next step is to make sure that OpenSSH is also installed. So I'll do a dpackage list and then grep OpenSSH just to, to verify that my SSH server is installed. So these were all the default settings. I didn't do any of this. This is just validating that these settings were there. Uh, the first thing that we're actually going to install is an NFS server. So we'll do a sudo apt-get install-y and then nfs-kernel-server. And this will take just a second to download and install the, the NFS server. And so this will be for our assurance uh, backups. And this is going to be also used for uh, version uh, Catalyst Center version 3.x. Uh, we'll also use NFS as well. Now that we have NFS installed, we're going to add a user account. This will be the user account that Catalyst Center uses to log in uh, to do the backup. So, uh, we'll do a, a sudo user add dash m cc dash backup. So we'll call the user cc dash backup. And we're going to use the m option to include a home folder. So we do want to make sure that the, the user has a home folder on the backup server. So after we added the user, we'll also change the password by doing a, a sudo password cc dash backup. And then we'll set the password for this user. The next thing that we're going to want to do is create our folder structure. So I'll make two directories. I'll do a sudo make directory dash p and then data automation and cluster one. This will be for our automation data. And then sudo make directory dash p for data assurance cluster one. And now if I had multiple catalyst centers, I could just create a you know cluster two, cluster three, so on and so forth. And then I do want to change ownerships of that file. So I'll do a sudo change owner dash R. And for this one, we'll put cc dash backup colon cc dash backup for the entire data uh, directory. So everything else underneath data will be under the cc backup. However, for the assurance folder, we do want to change the permissions. We'll do a sudo change own dash r and then nobody colon no group to the data assurance folder. And the reason why we're using nobody and no group 
is because on our NFS server settings, we're going to be using all squash. So we're going to want to make sure that uh, that user is the uh, gets put on the nobody or no group user for that one. Okay, uh, we'll also want to change the permissions. So we'll do a sudo change mod and then dash r and then 775 for the data. So this will set the permissions for the data and all all the uh, subfolders underneath it as well. Now that we've got our folder structure uh, set up and configured, we'll want to configure the NFS server. So we'll do a sudo nano etsy and then exports. And then I want to add the following line, which would be data assurance cluster one, the folder for the, the assurance, and then a star or as, uh, asterisk for basically all, all devices. You could put it as an access list for uh, individual IPs if you want, but I'm just going to do it for everybody. And then read, write, sync, no, sub, no subtree check, and then all squash. Now the all squash is going to, uh, when the user logs in, it's going to basically make them an anonymous user. And that's why we have the nobody or no group so that the user coming in after they successfully logged in is going to have the appropriate rights for that folder. So that's why we've set, set it to nobody, no group is because we're doing the all squash uh, for the NFS config. So I'll save the changes. And now I do want to export that file system. So I'll do a sudo export fs dash a and then after that i do want to start the nfs server so i'll do a sudo systemctl start nfs dash a server so these are all the steps to set up the the backup server and now we'll go into catalyst center to complete the configuration so from here we'll go to system and then backup and restore Here's where we can see the backups, the schedule of backups activity, and here's where we'll click on the configure. So I'll set up the remote host for the, the remote host will be for the automation data or our sync, and the NFS would be for the assurance or the NFS data. So I'll add in the, uh, the host IP address. The server port is going to be port 22, and then I'll put in the server path, which in my case was data automation cluster one, and then I'll put in the, the backup username. So in my case, it was cc-backup, and with the, the appropriate password, and then I'll also add an, uh, an, enc an encryption passphrase. I'll save those settings, and then I'll move over to the NFS settings, and I'll enter the same, same server. IP address, and I'll give it the, the assurance path, which was data assurance cluster one, and hit apply. When you mount an NFS drive, the elastic search is going to get restarted. So this will temporar temporarily dis disrupt the assurance services. So anytime that you make a change to your NFS settings, wait for the elastic search service to uh, restart itself before continuing on to uh, doing additional things within Catalyst Center. So now that the settings are configured, I can go ahead and create my backup. So here I'll just create a new backup. I create backup and I'll call this one initial for the initial backup. And then I can you know, create it now. I can schedule it for later or I can do uh, Catalyst Center all data or I can just do the without assurance data or automation only. So I'll just do all data and create this new backup. And then through the power of editing, I'll speed up this process. And, and here, everything is complete and it's success, it, it is a success. So this takes you step by step th through the process of configuring the backup server, as well as configuring Catalyst Center for backup and restore. Thank you for watching.